time it is boys and girls young and old alike it's time for another exciting sermon from super sermon dave man up in there it's a bird's plane it's super sermon dave man hey guys got another exciting sermon i wrote years ago and put on a truck driving um, line whenever i used to preach to truck drivers it's called fear versus faith i'm gonna go ahead and read it to you here and if you're struggling with fear this should bless you and help you to Overcome that fear in the name of Jesus, because God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. <clears throat> our enemy, our foe, is the devil. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus and use the word of God. Use that scripture. That's a good scripture to use. So I'm going to go ahead and read this to you, boys and girls, young and old alike. And may you be blessed, and may God <clears throat> give you wisdom and knowledge <clears throat> and understanding. So I'm going to go ahead and read. It's called Fear Versus Faith. I read this. I wrote this years ago. Uh, I read sermons that I wrote and also preach sermons I wrote and also do comedy and stories and jokes. And did singing one time, maybe some more singing, but here it goes. It's called Fear Versus Faith. The devil's presence is fear. The root cause of fear is the devil. Fear is like a vice tightening its grip on a person until it tries to destroy every area of faith within the individual. But faith is stronger. It destroys the life of its captive prisoners, fear does. Fear tries to squeeze the life out of its victims. Number one, fear is bondage. Romans chapter 8, 15 says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye received the spirit of bond adoption whereby we cry out a father. And, uh, and number two, fear is not from God. So it's not from God. 2 Timothy 1, 7, chapter 1, verse 7, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Number three, God delivers from fear. <clears throat> so Psalm 27, 1 says, The Lord is my light, verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Number four, fear of man bringeth a snare. So um, number four says, Psalm 56, 11 says, verse 4, or, or I mean verse 11 says, in God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what what man can do unto me. And last, the last um, number of the last step of this uh, cause this, I would believe. Number five is God gives us the ability to overcome. God gives us the ability to overcome. We can overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. Revelations 12, 11, verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They loved not their lives unto the death. And that's the truth right there. God it helps you overcome. Um, God does not want us to fear. And Isaiah 41, 10 says, verse 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee, the right hand of righteousness. Fear eats you like a cancer, slowly takes the lives of its victims. Fear can have a paralyzing effect on you and can try to in, try to um, enter interfere on what God wants to do in your life. Fear is related to anxiety and worry. There is a healthy fear, like fear of poisonous snakes when you see one, or you immediately back off. Faith in Hebrews 11, 1 says, verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews verse, uh, chapter 11, verse 6 says, verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith is a gift from God. God gives us a measure of faith. Faith overcomes fear. God gives faith. The devil gives fear. In the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. God gives every man the measure of faith. Romans 12, chapter 12, verse 3 says, verse 3, For I say, through the grace given to me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. The apostles asked God to increase their faith. Luke 17, 5, chapter 17, verse 5, 5 says, And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Little faith has great power and results. Luke chapter 17, verse 6, verse 6 says, And the Lord said, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you may say this mountain sycamore tree, be the, the sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in sea, and it should obey you. Faith moves mountains in your life. Matthew seventeen twenty six says in verse twenty six, 
And Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. A mustard seed is the tiniest of garden herbs, but it becomes the biggest trees in the gar tree in the garden. Even birds perch on its branches. Faith empowers an individual to go above and beyond his or her limits. Faith is a can-do attitude. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, verse 13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Faith and works go hand in hand. James chapter 2, verse 26, verse 26 says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Some of you live in, in silent fear, and some of you have faith to move mountains. Um, 1 Peter 5, 8, 8 through 9 says, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9, Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. We are justified by faith. Romans 5, chapter 5, verse 1. Verse 1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 23, The Lord wants to shepherd us. He wants to... Um, help us. He wants to deliver us from the stress and daily hustle and bustle of life and that and cares of this world and make us like lie down in green pastures. He wants to lead us beside the still waters. He wants to calm our storms. He wants to restore our soul and lead us to the paths of righteousness for His namesake. He wants what, what He wants what's ever come against us to to stop and make and and um that make us whole again. We we have righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have the fear we don't have to fear any evil. He is with us. God is our protector and shield. He is our rod and staff. They comfort us as rod and staff do. He protects us from our enemies by putting putting a table before us things in the um and anoints and he anoints our Head to do his and anoints us to do his will. We have an abundance from him. We want good, we want goodness and mercy forever to dwell and to dwell with God forever in heaven. We have to repent of our sins, which is asking for forgiveness and turning from our sins. Jesus, is a shepherd, he is not a hireling and a hireling that leaves the sheep with the wild um, animals that come around and and eat and scatter the sheep. Jesus lays down his life for the sheep. He defends and protects us from all danger. He stands for us and will defeat the enemy when we cry out to him. He can calm any storm that you're in. He wants to us to look at him and not to storm that's uh, storms and that are around us. He wants us to rest in him, to be still and know that he is God and that he is in control. We have to let him be in control. Give up ownership of ourselves in him. Because we are bought, brought, bought with the price and we are not our own. Jesus paid the ransom. His blood was shed for us. He is a merciful Father. His mercies endure to a thousand generations. They are new every morning. He anoints those that He chooses to do a special calling. We are all called of God and we can do a ministry in, in any occupation. We are made righteous by Jesus, what He did at the cross. The sinners not until they give their heart and life to Jesus. God protects us in the most dangerous of situations. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even as any means be at peace with you. Let the Lord guide you and lead you. I know that some of you are going through fear, and some of you have great faith, and some of you have great faith when you used to have fear. But for those that have fear, I want you to know that that's the presence of the devil, and you can rebuke me in Jesus' name. The Bible says, submit to the Lord, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. And those that have faith... You've learned to have great faith. You've seen God move. You've seen Him. You'll see that He moves again. And for those that don't, and I've had faith before, trust in the Lord to move, and He'll do it again. And have faith. Hebrews 11 1 says, Faith is now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's just hope for it. Hope for what God can do for you and what He did for you at the cross. And you'll see it. And even though you do not see it now, you will see it. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I come here and understand. And I pray for the hearers, Lord, the ones that are struggling with fear. And are wanting faith, and the enemy is attacking them, and, and and attacking them in all areas, causing them to fear, and they're not looking to you for faith because they're looking at the waves of the sea and the blustering winds and the crashing waves, and the, and they looked at they looked at that and said they're looking at you because they think that 
they're sinking in this water, but I pray you pull them out and say, why have little faith? Why would you doubt? Have faith in me. You know, it's Jesus you're saying. Have faith in, them, in Jesus, guys and gals. Jesus loves you and he'll set you free. I just pray that you would help them, Lord, and set them free from fear. And I rebuke you, spirit of fear off them. God did not give them a bondage again to fear, but he gave them a spirit of adoption whereby we cry out, Father, you saw these hearers, now they're struggling with fear in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray you give them great faith, faith that move mountains. And I thank you, Lord, for faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Thank you for giving them faith and giving them peace and calming their storm right now. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I want you to know that if you can like and subscribe to me or comment if you got prayer requests. I will pray for you. I do not mind praying for you at all. I want to pray for you. In fact, that's part of the reason I'm on here is to minister to you. I do comedy. I do sermons. I do stories and jokes. I did. I sang one time. I, you know, I do preaching on here. This is some of the sermons I preach, and then I also have sermons I, re I wrote, and I, I just read some today to you. I'm just wanting to God let God use me to make a difference in your life, and uh, so if this has touched you or reached you, just subscribe and like or share or whatever you like. And for the viewers, and I'll pray for you, and whoever comments and likes and subscribes, I pray for you too. No matter what, I'll pray for you. Whether I know you or not, Jesus knows you and he knows your name. And, and if you're a Christian, he has your names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But if you're not, then let Jesus in your heart as Lord and Savior. He died on the cross for your sins so you could have go to heaven and have peace and, and just repent of your sins in Jesus' name. And um, this, is another, uh, this is another exciting sermon from Super Sermon Dave, man. Up, up in there, it's a bird to plane. It's Super Sermon Dave, man. Over and out, Roger, over and out. Super Dave Man has left the building. God bless you guys. Loving Christ and Jesus loves you too. Bye-bye.